This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. For all your favorite characters from the Gillivers, shop the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. Also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone supplier of Inside the Gillivers. See their entire lineup today at Rode.com. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Season 2, Episode 14 of Inside the Gilliverse, where we talk all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. My name is Eric Broadbent, and it comes with great pleasure to welcome tonight's guests in plural. We're speaking here, two guests this evening, owners of Breaking Bad RV Tours and ABQ, Jackie and Frank Sandoval. How are you doing, guys? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you for having us on the show, Eric. It's, it's great to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. We've been talking about this, I think, since probably fall of last year. Uh, it seems like even longer because with this crazy, crazy stuff that's going around in the world right now, it's, time is, is kind of a standstill. But nice to finally have you here, uh, you know, talking about Breaking Bad and motorhomes and RVs and things of that nature are very close to, uh, to, to my heart, of course. So we're looking forward to that. We've got a lot of people on the chat tonight. We'll have some great questions for you, but it's uh, nice to have you. You've been, uh, been busy. Has, it, has business been good even we've into these troubling times? You know, um, it, it is. It, it's getting better. Uh, our numbers are coming down, so that's a good thing. Uh, so everybody is being safe and responsible. And uh, so we're able to actually operate, um, you know, not at the full capacity that we used to, uh, but at least we're able to take six to seven, maybe sometimes eight people on the RV. As long as we can social distance and we can uh, maintain a safe environment for them. You know, obviously with the masking, yeah, we, we do require them to wear masks hand sanitizer, we run open air, and uh, we try to keep them as safe as possible. Nice, nice. And we'll, t we'll talk about it in depth as we get through the program here tonight as well, too. And you told me off here that you had a tour earlier even today, you, you said. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, just a couple notes to mention here tonight as well, too. We have a birthday tomorrow. One of our regular uh, friends and members here, Lori. Uh, it's Lori's birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday, Lori. And I believe, uh, I think it was Karina or someone got her a, a gift from our merch store, one of our Gillivers pillows you can see back there. She, Lori sent me a picture of it. So happy birthday, Lori. Uh, we have our links in the chat we'll be sharing if people want to grab some of our merch throughout the program as well, too. And that does help support our show. And should I even dare ask you guys the, the smell of the Gilliverse question? You've seen a few of our shows. Have you seen the, have you heard the answer what it smells like in Gilliverse? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, how about we do this? How about, Probably. and how about each of you can pick one thing? And if it wasn't bacon and fear, uh, thanks to Tom Schnauz, if it wasn't bacon and fear, what would you say, uh, would it smell like in the Gillivers? Jackie, you pick one word and Frank, you pick the other. Oh gosh. Um, apples. Okay. Apples. I would say peach. Like peach cobbler. Okay. Remember that from the episode on Better Call Saul? <laughs> yes. It's quite <laughs> cobbler. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So uh, oh, apples and peach. And I just had confirmation from Sandra. It was Karina that sent that gift. So uh, thank you, Karina, for sending that to Lori and happy birthday for sure. So and again, too, and we'll be jumping into some fan questions here momentarily, and we will do deep dives into the, into the program. But what, before we, we even talk business, what was it that got the both of you interested in Breaking Bad, the television show as, as a whole? Well, um, the, the first thing that happened is, um, you know, we, we lucked out. Uh, I was able to do a background role on Breaking Bad, uh, a walker scene uh, by the DEA office. And uh, so I had lucked out to do that. And uh, then Jackie got a frantic phone call from production. And uh, they, well, somebody actually, and I can I can speak on that. Yeah. Um, Frank actually got a phone call from production and said, hey, is your wife available? Because somebody didn't show up on set and we need somebody like now. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'll, I'll fly over there right away. So needless to say, I uh, got there very quickly and I was just honored to actually get on the show. So it was pretty incredible and they treat you so well. Um, so, but Frank actually got to work with the main actors. So 
uh, I got to work with like the stand-ins and stuff. But okay. He worked I was with still me. a background actor, yeah. but uh, but you know I, I I got to see them and uh, you know working outside the DEA office, uh, kind of walking out as Hank and Gomi walk in, and that was like the coolest thing to in the world. And that's um, that's kind of how we got started on Breaking Bad. Um, and then we decided to take friends in uh, in our car to do tours in our vehicle. Okay. And uh, it's kind of funny how it started. It started out just as a joke, really. Um, a good friend of mine that works works in the crew, and um, you know, I called him one time. I had a I had a friend who flew in from Florida, and uh, it was his birthday. And uh, so I I called and I said, I don't know a lot of the Breaking Bad locations. Can you put together maybe a little route? And, I'll buy you a beer. Mm-hmm. Well, through the tour, <laughs> funny thing happened through the tour. Uh, my friend from Florida said, uh, you should do a uh, Breaking Bad RV. You should get like a Breaking Bad RV. That would be like the coolest thing. And load that thing up and take people on tours. And my, my other friend uh, said, no, you don't want that because those things are, uh, they break down. They're not very uh, reliable. It, it's just a piece of crap. I don't think you can ever get anybody to ride in an RV. <laughs> so uh, after having a few beers, we, we made a bet. And I said, well, if I buy one, you can help me set that. You know, we can, we can do some stuff with it. And if I win and I, you know, if I get some people to ride it, then, uh, then you'll promise to, you know, help me set that because, uh, you know, that that's things that he's very good at. And so uh, I did buy one, and uh, I actually I did... found it in Glendale, Arizona. Okay. Glendale, Arizona. So I started to search to look <laughs> all over for this RV in 1986. Yeah. Fleetwood Bounder. And subsequently, it took two days to get it back to Albuquerque because it broke down all the way to Albuquerque. We were climbing Arizona hills. Oh, Arizona no. hills, sputtering up the hill. It was it was insane, and mm. and. Um, I thought she thought I was going to you know, lose my mind, but we ended up getting it back. We got it fixed. We went through it and totally cut it in and, and put seats in it, got it inspected. And uh, then we started doing tours and uh, our, one of our first um, people that rode the tour was the, uh, there was a convention in town and you know, the little garden gnome. Oh yeah. They have this little gnome. They had this they gnome. Would take it's, all I don't know if it's Travelocity or yeah. something back then. Well, they had a, they had a convention in town. And they heard about the tour and they brought the little gnome on board. And right after that, we started started getting a lot of bookings. And uh, so it kind of started as a joke and a bet. And then, um, and then it kind of kind of went from there. And we at that time, we ju- we, we belonged to a little uh, group called um, the Unofficial Breaking Bad Tour. Breaking Bad Tour. And, and actually, was, Mark and Ed they found are the that. ones that founded that. Okay, yeah. right, right. And, and so that's kind of how I got involved. It all happened kind of all at once. And uh, so that's kind of how we got But involved. Frank is really the mastermind behind it all. Honestly, uh, he came up with the idea. It's just brilliant. Well, it's a collective um, effort. Right. I, I don't want to take it. It was a collective effort. You know, but... There were a lot of people that actually, you know, put that's in their, their two cents and, uh, and, and made it what it is today. I can, I can imagine with so you this all started on a bet and as soon as you're getting this vehicle from Arizona to to home having it break down a couple of times I bet you're thinking oh that bet's going wrong real fast isn't oh, it yeah. yeah yeah it was it was in uh and he told turns me, out there was actually a part that was put on it backwards and so that's the why fuel it pump was, was put in backwards the, the fuel pump was put on backwards oh geez they had a mechanic work on it before and it was put on backwards and we didn't know until actually we arrived here yeah. okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny thing about these RVs, um, they have a main fuel pump, which drives the engine. And then you have a backup fuel pump in the back that takes the gasoline from the tank because it's like 30 feet away. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It pushes it to the front. Well, they had that one on back. So <laughs> when we picked it up, we drove out of town and the guy's like, hey, thank you for your money. <laughs> Breaking down. Yeah. yeah. So we called it the breaking down RV. The breaking down, the breaking. I like it. Well, I mean, I have a little bit of experience with motorhomes. I was telling you how close they were to me. My dad had one. We traveled all the time. Uh, and, you know, and Sandra and I have a huge passion for RVs and motorhomes. And my dad had one. It was, I think the brand was called Open Road. And it looked very, very similar to the Bounder. And it would be a late 70s slash very early 80s as well, too. But that's where my knowledge of these things kind of stopped. I think one time you had a Winnebago, too. That was a common brand up here in Canada. I'm not sure if Winnebagos are common in the States. 
but uh, the 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 bounder and especially of that era 86 i guess is that what the what it was in the movie 86 or in the, in the show 86 87 bounder. now what what are they like i know you said you found one in arizona are they hard are they rare to find well uh, they're easy to find because you're going to see them all over it's finding the right one okay yeah because um, there's two different ones you got the chevy chassis there's a chevy and a chassis ford and a chassis. ford chassis you got and, the chevy mm. and chassis so it's the, right the, ch- the p30 chassis is what we call it and uh, there's also different sizes. Okay. Uh, makes the models. There's like a 27 foot, so 30 foot, uh, all the way up to 34 feet. And so, you know, finding the right one, now the one used in the show uh, was 32 feet. Okay. And so we we found our original RV was a 30 foot. Yeah. 30 foot. So Small. it wasn't exactly the same, even though it looked the same, it was, it, it was a little smaller. Right. And so we ran that for... Got five years, roughly five years. I mean, we had to have it inspected with the PRC licensing and all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, that's the one that we got in Glendale, Glendale, Arizona. Yeah. And then, um, and then I, I said, hey, we got to get a backup. We need a backup because people are paying to be in the RV. And so we went and we found one in. Actually, Colorado. In Colorado, I found yeah, that one Colorado. too. Okay. I'm a great finder with RVs. If you need an RV, <laughs> you can call on me. Call Jackie. <laughs> I like that. That rhymes. That's good. Yes. That's good. If you need an RV, call, call me. On. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so we, we found a backup and we had it ready just in case, you know, we had to have the other one serviced. And, and fortunately, it ran beautiful. I mean, uh, for. But we also time. turned that one into the real. RV. Okay. R E E. Well, we made it look more like the one. Yeah. So we used that one at Comic Cons, and it has the full lab inside. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. We 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 outfitted kind of a, like a lab inside of it, and uh, we made it look like uh, what it would look like to have a real breaking down RV, and uh, what it would look like on the inside. And you know, obviously, we did one. I think uh, on set, um, it was uh, a little bit different, but uh, they used two or three RVs, I think, uh, when they were filming Breaking Bad. And so we we outfitted ours as continuity perfect as we could, possibly. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks for the share on that. We got a lot of um, uh, questions coming in now through the chat as well, too. So yes. we'll do a few of these, and then we'll jump over to some of our member questions, which are by voicemail. And um, if people want to submit questions for, for tonight, well, we can't do it for tonight's guest now, of course, but for future guests, you can hit that join button down below, and you can submit voicemail for us as well, too. So just check for that join button down below, and there's other perks for you as well, too. So the questions are coming in. This one is from Bob Rich. Uh, says, what are some of the locations or moments during the tour that usually prove to be especially enjoyable uh, and powerful for fans? Okay. You want to take um, that one? Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> I would say, obviously, one of the popular locations that we go to is Jesse Pinkman's house. Okay. Um, you know, everybody loves that location. Also, we go to Poyos Hermanos. And actually, um, when we, we get down there, and we actually have a burrito for everybody. So we purchase a burritos for them. And now if it's in the morning tour, you get a breakfast burrito. If it's in the afternoon, you actually get a carne adovada burrito, which is popular here in New Mexico. And it comes with red chili. And uh, also another really good location I think everybody loves is the Super Lab. Because oh. if they're open, we actually get to take people inside. So you get the whole experience. Um, you get the smell. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a laundry, laundry facility. facility. Yes. So you get the dirty smell of the laundry. I mean, you can take it all in. But not only that, just um, Albuquerque driving around, it's just beautiful, uh, the sightseeing and everything as well. So I think um, you, you get the full yeah experience, especially our skies here are so blue. Mm. What you see on the show is what you actually really get here, even the, down to the sounds. Uh, Vince Gilligan was brilliant um, and the writer's room getting all of those added details in on the show. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's it's an experience. It's perfectly itself. done. And the RV. OK, the RV is a location in itself. So, I mean, you get the sight, the sounds, the smells, everything. So, I mean, I, I would just encourage you, if you can, to come out and take the tour and check it out for yourself. But we go to it's a 52 mile uh, sure. ride. Okay, tour. So it's a three hour tour and mm-hmm. we go to about 25 plus locations and depending on time, uh, we'll add in some more. But I mean, I 
I can assure you, you will not be disappointed if you take this tour. Oh, that's fantastic. And obviously, like anything we all do, like with my shows, like my shows run, our shows here, they run an hour. I'm assuming you know how much you can talk at each location and we got to get going, you know, just to keep everything going. And you probably have it time now. So it's it does work up to about the three hours almost every single time. Right. Yes. yes. Correct. Yeah. I think when we first started doing the tours, we were. Oh, it was like four and a half, five <laughs> yeah. hours. There's so many locations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to remember, there's uh, 200 locations on Breaking Bad alone. Yeah. I think so, if you add Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Yeah. Well, no, Better Call Saul has already exceeded the 200 locations Jeez. in five seasons, and now yeah. six. So. Yeah. And yeah. that, and that's the same thing we find here too. Like we we can't answer every single question. We try our we try we surely try our best, but you know that's why next time around we try to do something a little different. And, and I'm sure that you guys do that as well too. You know it's it, it's oh, yeah. a, it's the same tour but a different experience every every single time you take oh, it. Every time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we keep our core. You know we we keep our core locations. You know for example, um, you know the doghouse. Everybody mm-hmm. loves the doghouse. <laughs> it's, it's just iconic. Uh, two goes headquarters. Uh, also, where Badger got busted, mm-hmm. where, where the bus stops were, uh, you know, the rail yard is just a, a plus, plethora of locations, which uh, hopefully you'll see someday. Tons of movies. Have Tons been of movies. There, yes. oh, okay. So right here. Not only does, is it just focused on Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and El Camino, but it's also focused on other movies and shows that film here because of our rebate program. Mm-hmm. Uh, we bring in so many productions. I think. Uh, I think there's like 15 going on right now and, you know, just so many productions here. And we try to highlight as many locations uh, as we can along the way, you know, in Twisters, okay, Boyle Sermanos and Walter White's house and also the car wash is another iconic location. Oh, yes. And um, also the super lab and even on the spot vacuum on the way, you know, back to Old Town. Old Town in itself is a location. And then we end at the Breaking Bad store, which is, uh, it's kind of like Disneyland. You know, when you take the ride, guess what? You end up at, at the, the store. Shop. Yeah. And Afterwards. the Breaking Bad store is just mm-hmm. incredible. Incredible. Uh, uh, Mark location. and Ed have really just trans- I mean, transformed this store into, oh, yeah. I mean, just, it's its incredible. incredible. That's so cool. I mean, the pictures do not exceed what they have to offer. Um, you yeah. just, you have to come out and check it out for yourself. And also they're moving to a bigger store. So it's even going to be even better. Um, I, I can't even imagine they're, they're coming up with so many different things. I think they have like a Heisenberg theme or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that they're going to yeah. be doing. And all I can say is that it's an experience in itself, the store. Now, did I read, so proud of them. did I read online May 1st? Is that when they're hoping to open? That, yeah. Yeah. Really? That's not that far away. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they can they can do it, <laughs> and they just got the keys they the day. Ones to do it. Yeah, <laughs> well, more power yeah, to yeah. to. I I had such a great time talking with them a couple of weeks back. It was so, so nice. I mean, so uplifting. And and Sandra here, she was she was commenting on just how positive they are and how fun they were. So I'm really looking forward to meeting them, and we are going to get down there and see all of you guys uh, this year. Uh, I just got to figure out some things here in Canada, but we're going to come down and see you. So we're looking forward to that and, you know, travel permitting and things with, you know, there's yes. lockdowns here and there and we have a new one that come upon us today. And you know, we just got to be smart and careful out there and we get to enjoy all these things. If, if everyone, you know, kind of adheres to not what we're being forced to do, but we're kind of being kindly, kindly asked to follow protocols and we'll, right. you know, it'll exactly. help us all. Uh, here is a question coming from Adam Strickler. And uh, it, it, Adam's question is, what's the most uh, memorable RV tour that you've done? That's cool. Hey, hey Adam. He's one of our frequent flyers. Hi, oh, nice. Uh, nice. We love Adam. Um, actually, I will tell you one. I'm a crazy fan. We pulled up to Walter White's house, and there was this girl. Um, she didn't see us pull up at first. She was taking a picture in front of the house, and she turned around, and she literally dropped to the ground and started, like, worshiping you know the ground like oh my god it's the breaking <laughs> bad rv and she totally freaked out and she went over to the side of the rv put her arms around the side started hugging it and kissing the rv i gotta say that was the, yeah. the biggest moment that we've ever experienced on the oh tour. yeah and she was in tears i mean <laughs> she was, she, she's got to be the biggest fan i mean there's a lot of big fans out there like dave layman he's yes. one of our biggest fans yeah um but she really I outdid it. So we gave her a t-shirt and we gave her some bags of blue. By the way, nice. if you take a tour with us, this is not met. Okay. 
It is pure sugar, yo. Okay. 99.9% sugar. Okay, Love so you're going to get high, but only a sugar high. <laughs> have to throw that in there. Okay, that's good. I love it. That's we do good. trivia on the tour, so we throw candy at them. Oh, yeah. And Swag. Yeah. Well, I like how you talked about the, the RV itself being the highlight for this person's trip. And I, I kind of look at it as you look at tribute bands that do tributes to the artists, you know, and in some places, you know, these tribute bands, maybe the big, the big band that's being emulated can't come to that location. So the tribute band is the closest thing that these people are ever going to see of their, of their favorite artist. And same thing too, you know, some, some people don't get a chance to go out to the sets when they're filming Breaking Bad or, or maybe they're just now a fan of the show. And obviously the originals, you know, it's not around things of that nature. So this is the closest thing you're ever going to get to it. So they can kind of live through the moment through your vehicles, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. And the fans are just so incredible. I mean, they, like like Jackie said, this is a this is, it's a location itself. When it pulls up, it's like, oh my god! And and they just I've never seen anything like it. Um, I'm a big Star Wars fan, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, Breaking Bad fans are just so incredible. I mean, just just incredible. I mean, from from the time they get on the tour bus to the time they get off, they are just really engaged and. Um, I remember one specific time we had air conditioner went out okay. on the RV. And, and if you've been in Albuquerque during the summer, um, you can you can relate to exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, these people are just sitting there with sweat coming down. And and I said, okay, guys, you know, um, you know, just for safety concern, you know, we can hold, head back to Old Town, you know, we'll give you a refund, we'll get you on another on another tour. And I remember this specifically. They said, no, Walt and Jesse did not have air conditioning in the RV. Let's push on. Nice. And they pushed on. And I they was it blown out. away. I mean, I was just so blown away. And I was like, these are just incredible, incredible fans. I mean, die just, hard. Just die hard. I would imagine, I, I mean, I, I look at both of you as very knowledgeable fans of the whole Gilliverse and myself. I love I love everything inside Gilliverse, or all the shows, but I don't ever profess to be the expert. And there's a lot of things I learn all the time. Um, and I learn a ton from, when you, from the fans, uh, from our show and our friends in the chat, things like that. I'm assuming there's probably some things you pick up once in a while for some people that take the tour that, wow, I didn't know that. Do you find that once yeah. in a while? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean. We, they threw something at us the other day. It was a couple days ago. I can't remember. <laughs> Okay, we so, had no idea. So we do this thing on the RV called Stump Your Tour Guide. Okay. Um, okay, so what that means is they ask us a question. If we don't know the answer, then we give them a prize. Okay. Right? And so... It was with Gail. It was with Gail... No, no, it was... Yeah, it was his address. Oh, yeah, Gail's address. Gail's okay. Address. You're right, you're right. Uh, it was Gail's address. So they asked me, they said, do you know what was Gail's address? And I, I'm sitting there thinking, and I go, I don't ever remember them... Same Same address, address on the show, and I don't know it. I, I, I really did not know it. And, yeah, and I said, you know what, you won. You, you stumped know? us, yeah. and uh, he spit the address right at me, and I was like, I don't even remember that. But I mean, that's how how dedicated the fans were. I mean, just incredible. There's there's some mornings here I don't know my address. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> depends on how well, many coffee. They, <laughs> they all know 308 Negro Royal Bay. I guarantee. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, that Anybody one. Yeah. Oh yeah. They know 308 Negro Royal. Yeah, exactly. that that just yeah. you, you just rolls off the tongue. You've heard it so many times, oh, yeah. especially with Walt saying it too. You know, like you just you you tend to remember that for sure. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think what we'll do here is uh, actually we'll ask a question from Eamon here. This is one of our good friends and our moderators and also a member. Eamon says, "Is there a cooking area on the RV?" So I'm going to just I'm going to take a play on that. I'm not sure if he means to physically cook or to cook drugs. Uh, not that you would, but uh, is there is there uh, is there a cooking area on the RV? We actually have a, a lab set up. Um, so we have tour bus seats um, subsequently through the RV right by the windows, and then we have a fake lab. Okay. To tell people it is fake, there's nothing <laughs> real about it, and as a matter of fact, uh, the cooking mantles don't even plug in, it does not really work, it yeah. does not really work. Yeah. Um, but we've functional. also got Ermenmeyer flasks, we've got uh, cooking mantles, we've got um, even um, Jesse's Captain Crunch cereal. Uh, you know, we have we have uh, them displayed throughout the RV, so it's it's kind of like a rolling museum, okay. And so, yes, there is a, a lab inside the RV. A you, fake 
You know something Sandra found here? I think it was at our local Walmart a while back, and I, I thought this was a revolutionary thing for Canada. Do you guys have the Funyuns down there? We oh, do yes. have Funyuns. Do you? They're, on, they're yeah. on the RV. Okay. Yeah, we have Funyuns yeah, and Skittles uh, scattered mm -hmm. all over the RV. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Because I, I hadn't seen them here. It, uh, like we have an onion ring chip. Um, and they're they're horrible here in Canada. Like, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because I loved them, but they'll make you sick if you're not used to them. And there's a white looking thing with all kinds of powder, and it's not like a funyun. She saw the funyun, she got them, and I was like, wow. And I, I almost we almost should have kept the bag just to have it just as a as a keepsake because they're they're kind of yeah. hard to find here, at least in my small part of Ontario. But anyways, we're gonna jump over now. We got a few other text questions coming through, but we'll jump over to the audio questions, and we've got three tonight. And it looks like uh, we'll start with Josh Gordon. And so here's a question from Josh, uh, one of our members here. Hey, Frank and Jackie. I have never done your Breaking Bad tour before, but I want to. It looks awesome. I have done the Stephen King tour up in Bangor, Maine, and that was awesome. And I'm curious, have you two done any fandom tours before opening up your own? If so, what were they? Thanks a lot. That's probably a perfect timing because you shared something on Facebook just the other day about a tour that you took. So tell us about that. Absolutely. And uh, so we went out and we did some uh, research on how other tour companies uh, run. Uh, we did the TMZ tour, the celebrity tour in Hollywood, and uh, we got some pointers from them. Josh, by the way, if you happen to see this, a great tour guide. Um, and uh, so we also did Starline tours. Right. We did Hollywood uh, yeah, star, tours. star tours. And so, yes, we uh, even even locally, we have a, we have another tour company called the Albuquerque Trolley, and they do a wonderful job. They do. And they so, do the best of the city tour. The city tour and uh, bad tours. And, mm -hmm. and so we've, we've taken several tours just to see how other people do it. And uh, we can incorporate a lot, of, a lot of stuff that they do that will actually make us better. Okay, nice. And obviously being a fan, like a, a business owner aside, it's probably fun just to see these the sights and sounds too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, because yeah. it's yeah. it's totally different seeing it from from a, a customer's point of view. Yeah. Because we are on the you know on, on the delivery end, mm -hmm. they're on the receiving end, and uh, sometimes I'll sit in the bus and I'll, I'll sit there and I'll go, okay, so this is what a person is going to see, and this is what it's going to feel like, and so we're always harder on ourselves than other people can be on us. Yep. And so we, we always want to raise the caliber of the tour so that it's, uh, you know, we compare it with Disney. Oh, we did some Disney tours too, we right? Did. Disney yeah. studio tours. And Universal Studios. Universal nice. Studios tours. We've done those. And uh, it's such a high caliber that we want to reach. We, we don't want people getting in the tour and going, oh, you know, that was just crap. Mm -hmm. You know, we want people to walk out of that thing and say, hey, wow, that feels like we were at Universal or it feels like we were at Disney. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to tweak it. We're always changing things and making it a lot better. Plus, you get the Frank and Jackie show in the yeah. morning. Plus, there yeah. you go. <laughs> you get the show. <laughs> well, I, I love that, and I can I appreciate that. And uh, as you and I, were, all of us were talking off the air, the same thing here with our show, too. Uh, you know, we had some technical issues over the, the course of the year, so how long we've been doing this. And nothing to, to, you know, lose any sleep over, but things that would drive us, especially myself, drive me crazy, you know, just, and, and the end experience for our viewers is the most important, you know, so we, you cut some things back to make it better for them and you want the end result for them to be happy. And if we don't see anybody in the chat being mad and angry that it was just, you know, with the production, then we're happy. Right. And same thing as you, you want that feedback at the end of the day. And you both sound like the, a couple that never set a settle for a status quo and, you know, raising your own bar every single time you go out. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's good. We're going to jump over to another audio question. This one comes from Karina. Uh, we're going to play hers right now. Hi, Frank and Jackie. This is Karina. I'm wondering where's the furthest place someone has come from to do the tour. And do you have any particular crazed fan stories? You must have some. I look forward to meeting both of you in September. Nice. Absolutely. Can't wait to meet you too. Yes. And, and hi, hi, Karina. We, 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 we kind of talk to you all the time and uh, thank you. That's a wonderful question. The, the furthest that we've ever got anybody to take the tour is Antarctica. Wow. Believe it or not, they, they were out there doing some, uh, they were scientists or something. And so they ended up, you know, uh, flying here. Uh, obviously they were doing other things. Mm -hmm, of course. Just to do that. That'd be a long, long way. 
Yeah. Um, so Antarctica, and I, I could not believe it. I said, wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, we've gotten people from Europe, from England, from Spain, Brazil, India, India Germany, Africa, um, wow. Estonia, which I didn't yeah, even know Estonia. existed. I always thought it was just you know, some, I think I saw it on a cartoon or something. <laughs> yeah. but, but, you know, and, and it's just wonderful to see where everybody comes from. Obviously, pre-pandemic, every single tour was a mix of about 50-50, you know, uh, people from out of the States and then, uh, you know, 50% of people from the States. And so every single tour is unique and it brings um, a diversity of people from all over the globe. And it's just so fabulous. And that's what we see. love about it because yeah. the diversity yeah, you know, we get so many interesting people. It's Very interesting. Amazing. I mean, just amazing. And we get professors, we get lawyers, we get um, very high educated. Uh, yeah, I, I was kind of shocked. I thought maybe we'd get more, you know, of an audience of, um, well, I don't know. You don't want drug dealers on there. But <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. I, that was my first thought. We didn't know we were going to get that. I was like, are we going to end up with uh, some crazies on here? You know, we thought uh, maybe we it was the bar I mean, scene or something. But, yeah, you know, no. we, it ended up being... Uh, very good. I mean, they're just very well educated. Yes. And so uh, we, just, we just we just love the tours. Professors and to teachers. Answer the second part to your question. Uh, oh, the guy with the tidy whities. They showed up with the tidy whities. Yes. Oh okay. boy. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, there was a guy. Uh, it's been a few years back. Uh, did show up, and you know we're we're checking them in. You know we're doing the roster. And then all of a sudden, you know, I looked down and I wasn't paying attention before and he had tidy whities on and a green shirt. And unfortunately, I, I told him, I said, sir, I'm sorry. You know, we got kids that ride this, you know, so I unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to put the pants on back on because <laughs> I think he just took them yes. off in his car and then he walked over or something. And, you know, at first I thought he was going to take a picture of his being a joke. But, you know, fortunately, that's yeah, that was one that was uh it's still books, yeah. yeah that one's still for the books was he good about it did he did he do it no problem or yeah yeah he did he was very very respectful yeah very respectful um and then we have uh others that show up in hazmat suits mm -hmm. uh complete i'm talking well now we would call it ppe okay yeah yeah and so you know and uh a mask and everything i mean the full, <laughs> full wow. gamut. you know and uh we've had that happen before but i mean just incredible President. that's crazy I, I would imagine too this is what's neat like you see you talk about people coming from like antarctica was is quite the uh the travel and i would imagine let's say someone like a, a couple is coming down there maybe it's for maybe it's a business thing and, and the husband's there on business and the wife is tagging along or the other way along the other way around and maybe one of the two um aren't fans of don't even know anything about the show i imagine they'd probably get just a nice sightseeing tour of albuquerque as well and maybe find out what's what this breaking bad all about and maybe like the show because of the tour as well too yeah, yeah. Oh, we've we, had we, that. Funny we story. get that all the time. Yeah, um, we get people. Oh, I've just, never seen the show, and I'm like, "Why are you taking the tour?" Yeah, and, and well, it's we better. just thought it'd be a, a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah, and you know they have some time to kill. You know they got a little downtime, and they jump on the on the tour. And the one thing that we we've, we've gotten in the past is we got we'll get an email, we'll get a review that says, "I finally saw the show, and because I took your tour first, oh my god, it just made it so much better." So now I can relate to the locations and, uh, and we get raving reviews. And so, you know, first they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. We play little snippets, you know, of different parts just to refresh the memory. Uh, but for the most part, um, by the time they get back home and they binge watch it, then they're sending us uh, all kinds of written reviews saying they love the tour and it, it made it even better. Oh, you know, that's cool. Not only that, we've had single writers take the tour. And then they end up meeting someone else, a oh, single yeah. writer on the tour. And then we hear back from them and they're all, oh my God, we met on your they tour. They met on the tour. And, yeah. and now we're together. And oh my God, it's just the whole experience. It's so cool. And I yeah. was just like, I was blown away by that. that was yeah, pretty, we, we, I don't know. Cool. I wonder how many marriages. I know, right? Or who came up? Never know. Hey. Know, you know, two people that met on the tour. You know, yeah. That would be interesting to find out and see if we can 
pole. You know, know. Know. They met and they yeah. went off and <laughs> got married. Never mind. Never. Your marriage is coming from it would be great. That's fantastic. I, I love that though. So you can add uh, an RV. Uh, Jackie can add RV sales to her resume or fire, scouting out yeah. resumes, yes. matchmaking. <laughs> you guys yes. have got <laughs> That's awesome. I will jump over to our final um, audio question. And this is from the birthday girl herself. This is from Lori. So I'm going to queue up Lori's question. Hello, Jackie and Frank. This is Lori. First of all, I know you have a celebration coming up. So I'd like to wish you both a very happy anniversary. Thanks for being here tonight and also for doing your RV tours for the fans. I really wanted to do this in the fall. But with the pandemic and our high numbers in my state, I have to wait. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for next year, though. I know that you're also Star Wars fans, so I wanted to ask if you could tell us a little about the Darth Vader at the movies YouTube video that was made at the theater and how that all came about. It looks like you had a lot of fun making it. I can't wait to take your RV tour and meet you both when I get to visit Albuquerque. Thanks so much. Well, first off, I just want to say happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday. Awesome. And, yeah, happy birthday. And also, we have a gift certificate for you. So you get a free ride on the RV tour. Now, to answer your question. Fantastic. <laughs> that was good. Happy birthday. Right. <laughs> and now to answer her question. Okay. And so <laughs> so hopefully uh, yeah, everything will work out and you can come out and uh, visit, uh, visit the tours. And we right. just totally love to have you and it's going to be fun and we'll jackie will give you plenty of the blue candy <laughs> right plenty of blue candy for you i might just mail this one to you um anyway uh you were talking about the star wars thing yeah we're yep. we're very big star wars fans actually we're part of a local group here called the 501st and so frank is actually one of albuquerque's darth vaders yep. and so we do that for kids and um to raise money for St. Jude's and other other know, charities. Other yep. charities. Yeah, to answer the question of the, that specific video, of, I'm not sure which one you're, you're referring to, but there's a couple of um, There's one where uh, Darth Vader, I'm dressed up as Darth Vader, and I'm walking through the theater, and I'm sweeping up popcorn, and I'm kind of earning my keep. And then the other one, I'm on a uh, game. Uh, I forget the name of the, the game where you have to like dance, and you have to match the beat. And okay. I'm in these six inch platforms and oh. uh, they're kiss boots they're oh, like kiss boots. yeah because yeah. i'm not Jeez, blessed with height so yeah. so in order to beat darth theater i had to had to get the six inch boots but yes uh, that was uh, the reason why we made that video is we wanted to do something fun because uh, darth vader's always uptight mm-hmm. and he's always uh, in my opinion grumpy yeah and so we decided hey we're going to do something fun with this we got the theater and we had a little downtime between showings and uh, before all the fans came and wanted pictures. And so we decided to do something fun and really, uh, really jazz up the video. Yeah, we actually had a film crew for that. Yeah. And then also part of our legion here with the 501st is the Dewback Ridge. And so a lot of those guys dressed up and they partook, you know, partook in it as well. And I actually dress up as Juno Eclipse, which comes from uh, the what is it the star wars force unleashed force video unleashed. game okay right so yeah. i'm actually vader's pilot basically anyway so that's what we do yeah <laughs> That's fine. So we wear many, many hats. <laughs> nice. Oh, fantastic. Well, good question and a great answer on that for sure. Uh, coming back to more text questions as well. This is from, again, from Adam Strickler. Uh, do you do private pickups? I would love to be picked up by the RV with Frank and Jackie and, and yellow suits in front of a church just as it gets out. Well, absolutely. For Adam, <laughs> yes. You we can make that happen. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we. you can hire the RV. Um, we, do, uh, we do private private tours because uh, some people don't want to be around a lot of people, uh, especially now. And you can hire the RV, um, anything under four, four people. Mm-hmm. And uh, we work a price that, that will fit fit their need and based on the need of what they want. But yes, absolutely. We do stuff like that. You know, crazy stuff. Like that. Oh, that's cool. And that, all, that they can all contact you through the website, which Sandra's been and our, our moderators have been sharing throughout the evening as well too, right through the website, they can contact you and, and request yes. that. Yeah, they can do uh, Breaking Bad RV tours, or you can call us the uh, five zero five two zero five seven two nine two. Okay, and uh, we will definitely make something happen. If Good, we can make it happen. We will. Exactly. Nice. 
nice a la carte build it as as they need kind of thing. yes yeah absolutely I we like- even do weddings so you know if you want to go out to tajli and get married hey we can do that too the that's bad where store. the right or the breaky bad store that, actually that sounds awesome yeah. that's that does sound fantastic so we have to clear it with marketing but uh, oh yeah, yeah. gotta clear it with marketing but mm-hmm. yeah as a, a team a team effort for sure uh, here's yeah. a question from Louise. Louise is Eamon's better half here. Uh, she says, do you feed the ostrich ostriches? Uh, why can I say ostrich tonight? <laughs> I can't say that word tonight. Do you feed the birds next to Twisters? Um, you know, we, we don't feed Wilbur is his name. That's what we're told. Okay. Uh, he has his own Facebook page. Um, we don't feed the, the ostrich because, uh, you know, we don't want, want him to get sick. And we tell people, we say, just be careful because they try to put their fingers through the fence. Oh, and just to just to highlight what this is, uh, there's an ostrich. Uh, he's he's a pet, right next to um, Twisters, which is most Boyle's Hermanos on the tour. And he always walks around and he's very friendly and takes pictures with people. And uh, so what a lot of people will try to do is feed him French fries. I think he likes French fries, but we don't want to feed him and then have to get get sick. So we we kind of discourage it. But, so we try uh, to tell people, please don't feed the ostrich. But you also need to be careful because if you stick your hand in the fence, you I guess think it's ostriches, a French but ostriches are prone to take jewelry. Yeah. Oh. So that's what I've heard. So I, <laughs> yeah. I've never stuck my finger in the fence at him, but you know. Uh, Can you imagine? They probably have a bit of. They probably have a bit of a uh, like a, a, a thing going on. Like they take the rings and bracelets and that, and they sell them off to the pawn shop after. Right. That's yes. what I hear. Never know. Yeah, that's what I hear. I mean, you know, so he's been known to grab a necklace or two. Yeah. And so, so that's why he was wearing those necklaces. No, I'm, I'm joking. Well, yeah. not not to mention wild game bird are not exactly the things. You, I mean, with their wings alone, what they can do, you know, it'd oh, break yeah. your arm. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I've seen him get mad at them too. He has. He does he not has. want to. Yeah. yeah. He does the whole. Or I think that he can just tell. If he can good, sense if, if, you're a good you know, if you're a good person or you're not the aura maybe of a person. Yeah. But. I mean, overall, though, he's he's a fun bird. He comes up, smiles at the fence. <laughs> That's awesome. I talk to him just like he's a person. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I've never struggled. I don't say the word ostrich every day, but I've really struggled yeah. with that word tonight. I don't know what it is, but, you yeah, know. Ostrich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Now I know this can be found on your website. This is one of my questions, and Karina reminded me of it here as well, too. A similar note. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of cast and crew from the show, from shows. Period. Um, a lot of different uh, things through the Gilliver's attend the tour. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of them who have attended, and any special, you know, notes or, or feedback or compliments that they've given you on the tour. Yeah. Um, you know, one one specifically that. Uh, comes to mind is uh, Jeremiah Bisui. Mm, yes. Victor. Wonderful. Him and his wife have been on the tour. We've done uh, wow. celebrity tours um, with him and Ellie. And uh, they're just just incredible people. I mean, wonderful. And um, so they've been on the tour. We've had a Combo on the tour. Ian Posada. Who uh, played Brock. Who played Brock. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, at one point, he actually was, uh, he was kind of our, our helper one summer or last summer. And um, he actually liked to uh, just ride with the bands and, and, you know, they would take pictures and say, you know, wow, oh my God, I he met sign, Brock. Yeah, autographs. You know, sign autographs. Mm-hmm. And uh, prior to COVID, we had what we called the celebrity days and where we would invite some celebrities if they were available to meet us on the tour and, and just, uh, you know, get to say hi to everybody. Stephen Michael Quinsada showed up at the car wash. He's yeah, showed up car more wash. than once. He hasn't been through the tour, but, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, but, but he's, he's always showed up. But he showed up at the car wash to surprise fans. Yeah. Um, we did have Betsy Brandt on, who is Marie, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and uh, that, that was, was in actually Fe. in Santa Fe at the, film, at the Roundhouse for yeah, the film day. Santa Fe film day. Yes. Yeah. Um, and she is, oh my gosh, she's the most humble she's fun. person I have wonderful, ever met. Wonderful. Uh, She's awesome. She's also from Michigan, so I'm from Michigan. Mm-hmm. We kind of hit it off with RJ that. Mitty. And uh, we had RJ. Yeah, RJ Wall Jr. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, just uh, Jonathan Banks showed up to say hi one day. Nice. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah. Uh, he showed well, up one day. Well, because we had Les Mis. Les Mis. Les Mis. The, yeah. the I can't player. say it. Mm-hmm. Sorry. We had the whole cast on the tour one time. Wow. And, uh, they're big Les Mis fans. And um, so he actually showed up one day to to actually say hi to everybody. Nice. 
we've we've had both RJ and and Betsy on the show here as well too, and just so fun. I remember when Betsy was on the show, we did a I think it was a test call the night before, and she's she was even planning to wear a Van Halen shirt just for me the next day, which was pretty cool. So I took that's that cool. as a, that's a awesome. yeah, that was kind of nice. That's uh, cool. For sure. Here's a comment, not a question, just a comment from Andrea. She says, I'm, and she's from Germany, uh, looking forward so much to September. She's coming over to Albuquerque in September. I think her and Karina are possibly meeting up and meeting you uh, both excited for the tour. So that's fantastic. Awesome. Yes. We can't wait can't to, wait meet, to meet, you. meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Again, no, no an, another long time, a long traveler, a long distance traveler for yes. sure. Yes. Yeah. So, so we're, I mean, we're, we're just ecstatic that things are going to start to open up and, uh, we're going to start to see a lot of people from other countries coming again. Good. And it's just wonderful to see that. Yes. Know? And absolutely. as long as uh, everyone stays safe. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. Uh, vaccinations rolling out in your area now? Absolutely. Yeah, they're already uh, rolling in this area. And uh, we've already got ours. And uh, you're signed up for yours. So. I'm signed up. For yes. You. Good. <laughs> Good. Oh, that's good to know. And we're we're rolling out here in Canada as well, not as fast as I'd like to see. And and normally I'm I'm not a person that goes out like for flu shots and things of that nature. But I'm actually looking forward to this, just because I think right now I think that's the only thing that's really gonna you know save us yeah. because people just were we're all in such a uh, a hurried like, and we're all guilty for it. We all want to get back to normal, but we mm-hmm. can't necessarily do that unless you know we all take and some. The precaution. only way we're gonna get to normal is to get out and get vaccinated. So yeah. We can end this thing and we can continue, uh, you know, the life that we had. Yeah, it may not be the same as before, but, you know, at least uh, it's somewhat normal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I encourage everybody to get out, get the shot, and uh, that way we can we can end this. I agree. We, we both heard something on the radio today. I really kind of hit home for me. It was on a Canadian radio station here. And, you know, people are saying like uh, there was a, it was a, a younger mom, I guess, and talking about how, how her kids think this is the end of the world. And it, and it made me think about it for a second. Like us as adults, we know it's not the end of the world by any means. You know, we've been through things before, uh, you know, viruses and plagues and pandemics and th- all kinds of tragedies we've all gone through over our lives. But kids, in a lot of cases, this is new to them. And, it, you know, life is a lot different for them. So it makes you think sometimes like, wow, I mean, just hopefully we get back to normal so, soon. So, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, for people that don't know, and here again, too, there's probably a lot of people know way more about this than even myself. I'm sure they do. But the your commitment with the movie El Camino, and, you know, fans right now, they're complaining they're waiting so long for Better Call Saul season six. Now, obviously, the pandemic had uh, uh, the reasons for that, whereas the difference between going from season four to five, you know, they were, they were frustrated with that, but El Camino happened in between. So maybe you can share with us what your involvement was with that, which is obviously a fantastic uh, 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 presentation. Yeah, yeah, and um, so uh, so I can talk about this now, obviously, mm-hmm. because it's out. And um, uh, we were we were asked to see if we can use one of our RVs uh, for the movie El Camino, and uh, to throw the fans off, um, we gave out some um, uh, some of our flyers so that uh, the scene takes place at the Alvo Cafe, and where the RV is sitting there, and Walt and Jesse are kind of having lunch, and um, and they, they, they built these huge green screens all the way around the, uh, the property. Uh, and so you really could not see what was in there. But uh, if, if somebody happened to see or they walked up and they said, hey, what's going on here? Um, then they would give out one of our flyers and say, you know, we're filming a uh, you know, commercial for the Breaking Bad tour in the tourist industry. And so, um, so that, was, that was our our commitment to El Camino. Now, the, the one thing that I had to do is, you know, uh, obviously you have to sign NDAs and you can't talk about it. And so I did not even tell Jackie. Yeah, I had no clue. Until a week before El Camino was done. <laughs> but he was telling me, oh, the RV is in the, in a mechanic up there by Eubank. And I'm like, there's no mechanic up by Eubank. I am not stupid. Yeah. Uh, I grew so, up in that area. <laughs> but I went along with it. Yep. Yeah. So she, literally, I she did not know. <laughs> but I did she not, did know. not <laughs> know. And uh, and uh, I I gave my word and committed. I will not say anything about it. And uh, so I feel very honored and gracious that uh, that they trust. Me. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I'm very familiar with the NDAs. You know, I have to do that with certain companies that I work with. And it's just like, you're, I'm like a kid. I'm not a kid like a Christmas and I'm like, I know what you're getting for Christmas. I know what you're getting for Christmas. And then, and those kind of things I will sometimes spoil, but with NDAs, you're like, 
you can't. You just can't, or else you never get to sign one again because they don't trust you, right? You're done. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, that, that's right for sure. Let's talk a little bit about since we're talking about you know the the transition with Better Call Saul. El Camino was in the middle there. Um, I I'm assuming you're both fans of Better Call Saul. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh love Better Call. Definitely. Saul. I mean, just it, the, the way they're tying everything. It's just it's, it's just so incredible. I, I now do you have any hopes thoughts theories you know it's so nice to talk to everybody about the different theories and there's so many theories out there um but any uh hopes or thoughts for the the series finale you know um i hope um that we will see you know that one scene uh where walt meets saul goodman for the first time and you know i i i hope we see that you know in better call Saul. And of course, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. I mean, I, mean, I, I hope. he's my favorite. So I mean, I, I, hope. I, I really want to see him. Yeah. At least make an appearance at some point. I'm sure. We hope. So. Hopefully. That would be that would be great, you know. Uh, Sandra's watching right now. Um, Better Call Saul. We're up to season five, episode three or four right now, and you know, I'm telling her now. Like, okay, it's funny because when you binge watch things, that's a good thing. It's a bad thing. You can consume so many things so much so fast. But then there's going to be this long wait. And I almost feel guilty for rushing her through the series because, you know, we'll be waiting till probably this time or later uh, next year before we'll see it. But I can imagine Albuquerque's buzzing right now. And I know there's probably some things that you can't even talk about because you're privileged to some things that you see down there that we don't get to see here. But it's probably nice to see the the uh, area busy again, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. it is. Definitely. I mean, incredible. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. And it's good to see the fans uh, coming out again. I mean, they're driving in you know, to take the tours. And uh, I mean, you know, we've got people coming in from all over the place, uh, yes. you know, uh, New York, uh, Vegas, California. I mean, they're driving in, they want to see the Breaking Bad store. They've heard about it. And, uh, and they're taking the tours again, which is, which is great. And, and we're, we're very lucky. And, and like I said, we're very privileged. privileged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I like what you're talking about earlier when you're talking about how everything was green screened around the restaurant there, where a lot of people don't realize, especially for people that don't know the area. And I, I don't know the area, but I was just, I just know this from, from folklore and story that it made it look like there was, it, it wasn't, it was a full desert across the street or, or how, how they, I forget how, what they took out. So they, it's just a commercial area right across the street from the restaurant and they yeah, made it look like there's, desert. There's restaurants, restaurants and yeah. there's the like a, yeah. and even the freeway is not too far. Yeah, you can see, it you can the, see the freeway. And so, um, so yeah, they put in the desert. Scene. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I thought. Yeah, that scene, there's just a road that drives by, which yeah. is, it, and it looks totally different. Yeah, totally, totally different. Yeah, absolutely right. amazing. It's amazing what the power you can do with with the green screen, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And CGI and everything is crazy. Yeah. They added in. Mm-hmm. Have you guys had a chance? It seems all your fans have uh, Better Call Saul. Have you seen Bob's new movie, uh, Nobody yet? You know, um, we, we haven't seen it, but I heard that it's it's coming out like maybe even today. And so to to stream it, our, our movie theaters are still closed here. But uh, right. so we're we're looking to to actually watch that hopefully this weekend. I'm going to do the same thing as well too. Here in Canada, it's a little yeah. different for us. Like we don't have some of the 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 bigger outlets like you have in the United States, but we have you know we have one chain of theaters here, Cineplex, and they are open in some of our major cities. I think there might be a couple in Toronto that are open. You know, any of our big Vancouver things like that, the big cities, but the smaller cities here, where they're they've been closed since since pretty much since the pandemic started last year. Yep. So I'm going to look to see if they have it. And I was really bummed when I when I first saw that it wasn't coming to home video right away or on demand because yeah. you know that's we really can't we really can't uh go see it right so i'm gonna look here in canada this weekend and there'll be something we'll rent for the family and, and take a look but it's getting some great reviews from what i'm hearing yeah i i hear he's a awesome action hero <laughs> yeah yeah that's looking that's looking really good really good reviews and looking Can't forward to, to see it, it. Yeah, definitely. yeah yeah so once again, as we get ready to wrap up the program here, let's, we're just going to direct people back to your website and places like that. Look, again, so pretty, the tours run, how many days a week do they run? Um, we run Thursday through Mondays. Okay. Uh, we start at 10 a.m. And uh, you can get your tickets uh, break, at BreakingBadRVTours.com. And you guys are also on Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? Uh, yeah. Um, we're on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Facebook. Mm-hmm. 
Fantastic. Well, uh, throughout our moderators and Sandra Lee here uh, throughout the evening as well, too, they've been sharing all your links and we have them down in the description as well, too. So I really encourage everybody, if you haven't, uh, if you don't know much about the tour, hit those links down below and follow their profiles. And we will look forward to meeting up with you this year as well, too. We're going to get down there. We don't know exactly when it is yet when we're coming, but we are obviously with different lockdowns and travel. I understand from what something that was proposed on us in Canada here today in Ontario, Canada, they're, um, well, like I said, all of Ontario and, and the borders are locking down the borders tight again for the next six weeks, at least for us here. Oh, wow. So, and, and I guess that goes both ways, unless you're, you know, if you're a medical professional or you're, uh, you know, people, uh, essential. yeah, essential workers, yeah, then you can't yeah. travel. So we'll see how that goes. But I mean, that's only six weeks. And again, if we all you know, kind of follow protocols, so we, that will shorten up a lot more too. So we'll look forward to seeing you this year for sure. Yes. Oh, we definitely. can't wait. Yeah, and we'll we'll do our best here as well too to share as much information uh, through our socials as well through our Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram and things of that nature as well too. We so, also do have a virtual tour. Yes. Yes. Take if for some reason you can't get out here to take our tour. Now, how is that? How can people get that? Yeah, and they can they can go to Breaking Bad RV Tours, uh, click the calendar, and then click the virtual link. Okay. And uh, it's literally like it's kind of like a uh, video. You get to go forward, backwards. Uh, there's some trivia on there. Uh, you get to sit inside the RV, which is really cool. Actually look out the window at some of the locations. So it's nice. kind of like being here. Nice. And yet some people, even if they can make if they can make it, some people are um, a little, uh, uh, what's the word, I guess the polite way, just a little more worried, I say, uh, maybe, uh, yeah. of traveling. So maybe that's a good way for them to do it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And if you, if you don't want to be around people, you can take the virtual tour. Mm -hmm. Love it. It's, it's incredible. Nice. Even being around people, we do have COVID uh, things in place. So we do have plexiglass actually uh, in between all the seats. Oh, nice. And so we keep you protected. And we stagger uh, seating. And we stagger seating. So that way uh, you're six feet distancing. Um, so we make sure that we do everything that we can to comply. Yeah. To and keep so that you're safe. safe. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, hats off to both of you for doing that for sure. Listen, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here. You. The 60 minutes goes by pretty darn fast, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and especially too, when we talk for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes off the air too, we're warming up, you know, by the time we get rolling, uh, you know, it, it's it, 60 minutes is over and, and, uh, and a blink of an eye. Uh, so I want to extend a big thank you to both of you for, for coming on uh, the show. And I want to also, I make notes every week because there's so many people to thank that make this show uh, a success. You know, I just push the buttons and smile and try my very, very best <laughs> to keep the technology working. But a big thank you to my beautiful Sandra Lee, our executive producer. Uh, she's working around the clock to make this show what it is. Uh, so thank you. I also want to say a big thank you to our show sponsors. We talked about bobbleheads earlier, Warren and Rachel over at bobbleheads.com. Uh, they provided some cool Gus Fring figures uh, to give away on our last, uh, one of our last shows back with Giancarlo Esposito. And uh, we had a few winners. One of them is in the chat tonight, Arctic Sakai. We had uh, a couple other winners as well, too. I think we had, uh, we had... Uh, Elizabeth Coleman. I forget. I forget everybody's names at one. Uh, but we had some some great winners in that. They gave away four of those. So thank you to Bobbleheads.com. I also want to thank our channel members. You can become a member by hitting that join button down below. Our Patreon uh, supporters, music uh, patreon.com slash music your network. Our channel moderators, of course, we couldn't do this without them as well. Our YouTube subscribers, our super chatters, PayPal donators, and those that buy our merchandise at the Broad Stash Boutique. If you're new here tonight watching the show for the first time, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below, and we will work just as hard to keep you as we did to get you. Uh, tune in the same time next week, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We're welcoming back. I'm very excited to say this. We're welcoming them back. Welcome coming back peter diceth who plays dda bill oakley on better call saul peter was our very first guest and as tom schnau said in the last episode there's no role there's no small role in better call saul there's no small role as you know you guys have had roles on the show there's no small role everything is important right and his role of oakley you know wasn't necessarily necessarily cast in stone is going to be a long reoccurring character and he has just nailed that part i mean he's he's just wonderful sandra and i love him he's funny as heck he's a cat lover so very close uh, to us as well so we'll look forward to having peter back next week and check us out we talked about socials uh facebook and instagram.com slash inside the gilliverse uh, i'll say goodbye to you guys off the air we hope you have a wonderful weekend and have great business as well too and we'll look forward to seeing you all next week we really appreciate everyone's time this evening thank you thank you for having us see everyone thanks so much for joining us thank in the you. chat we'll look forward to seeing you next week right here thank same you. time until then cheers thank you.
Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. 